Welcome to our Country Christmas Project. Um, this project combines a very rustic barn door with some crackle medium and some chalky paint. Notice that it's a really, really matte finish. That's what chalky paint does. It gives it that old world feel. We've also put some crossbar embellishments and some little hinge embellishments, and we've got a frayed rough rope as well. So we've got the whole country thing going on here. And then we've got just a simple swag very fun to paint. We used a couple stencils to make it easy and just some fun little techniques. It's a really um, kind of low-key project. It's not real hard. It would be a great class project because there's just a few elements. Um, but I think for me, I love the idea of country Christmas. I live in the country and um, what a great welcome for our house. Um, we've also got some little rusty hinges which I might have already talked about. Neat thing about this board is you can glue on on the back side it comes with two extra little slot things and hinges so that you can actually just flip it over and reverse it. I don't have mine painted yet but imagine a cute little Halloween um, project on some dark rustic wood or whatever and then you just flip it over and now you've got a dual purpose sign so it's a reversible sign as well. All right we're going to take this brush bristly short um, bristle bright brush and we're going to use charcoal gray and pebble and we're just going to start creating the undertone for our um, barn wood. We don't want to get it too black because then it's going to get scary so I'm going to use some black and then go over it with my charcoal gray, and my pebble. really want this aged weathered look and we really do want to see some lights and some darks so um, don't, don't be chintzy um, with both kinds of values. Okay, this is going to leave a streaky kind of look because of the kind of brush this is. And that's a good thing. Okay, so I'll go into here. It really doesn't have to be covered all the way. Um, like if I'm getting rid of all of my lights. Gonna get some of those work back in there. Yeah, so that's gonna show underneath the crackle of the red and the, the brown that I do on top. Okay, so this is the look that I've got right now. And this is obviously not where we're finishing. <clears throat> We've got two things that we're gonna do. We're gonna put some petroleum jelly on our board. I'm just gonna use our fingers. And we want to have some chipped and cracked stuff. Okay, now I can paint chipped and crack um, as well. I can, let's not do it in this middle area where we're going to um, have our um, art. So anyway, I can paint it as well, but um, why not have fun with this? Bring it out through where the um, the band is going to go. And you don't need very much. Okay. <clears throat> then I'm going to put on our crackle medium. And this does not have to be heavy. And you want it kind of here and there and everywhere. So it's how much paint you put on the, um, how many, I'm thinking about where I'm placing my colors and I'm not talking very well, sorry. It's um, how much paint you put on the crackle medium that determines the crack. So it's not um, how heavy this coat is. So you just need just a nice thin application because it's going to be a little chemical reaction. Make sure you get um, pay attention to where your sheens are, and you don't want it everywhere. And that's the most important thing is that you don't want this to be like, oh hey, I crackled. You want it to look like old, old barn wood. Okay, 
So you can see where the shiny stuff is. That's where I've done it. And I'll do my cross boards as well. Okay, I've got my boards all done. And then what I want to do is just kind of get myself a little bit of space. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my scratchy little brush here that I washed out. Now what I've done, we're going to use some chalky paints, it's the um, Rouge chalky paints, and I've got it out on my palette, and I've got two palette knives out, and I've got another chalky paint color, which is called um, Relic. Okay, and we're going to mix a little bit of Relic into the red. And I'm going to get out a bunch of this, I hope that I need it all. You want to keep your edges of your containers clean so that um, when you open them back up, you don't end up with a bunch of crumblies. And we're going to use quite a bit of red, so I'll just kind of dump out some red. I want it on there really thick. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. And now let's just push a little bit of that into our palette, into our red. So I would say it's something like maybe like eight. I'm going to switch to the fatter palette knife. Eight to one, so mostly it's red, but with a little bit of that relic mixed in. And that just knocks that red down just a little bit. It's, it was just a little bit kind of screaming at me, and this is going to be just like a country Christmas, so that looks like a lovely country red. <coughs> prepped up here and now it's time to play okay so what we'll do is we'll kind of scoop up our paint and I'm gonna to try to brush away from my edge okay so I'm gonna start kind of up here near the edge but not on it and I've decided not to use these holes so I'm just gonna paint them like they're there or not there okay so I'm gonna just lay the paint on really heavy and not worry if I miss some areas I want to scoop, 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 so that in my crackle areas I'll get a really good crackly look. I could even go into some of my relic and just kind of have some of that there too. Okay, and I just I'll be real quiet while I'm doing this. Now I'll go off the edge down here. Go back and just straighten up some, if you have any choppy lines. I'm going to do a little top dressing of stuff too, so. And I don't think I like the relic on the top layer, so I don't think I'll do any more of that. Okay, and that. I'm just going to go back in that area and just skim over that. So that's the effect that we're looking for, and we've already started cracking. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get you in close enough to see. It's got to be real, real heavy, or you won't get big cracks. Okay, so right here, I'm already getting some good cracks. Okay. Okay, I'm redoing the um, crackle. So what I've got, let me get this backed out for you. Oops, wrong direction. Okay, so what happened, I've got these um, bumpy areas on the inside of my boards, and when they come together, I didn't like that I would not be able to maybe paint it as easily. So I get the advantage of painting it one more time, knowing what I know now. So you can see it cracked and it aged and it did all kinds of fun things. I'm not a fan of the cracked on my lighter wood. I really like it on the dark. Okay, so I'm going to change how I did that. And then I'm not a fan of not... I can. I could fade this in and that's what I would have done, but I like the idea of cracks all over and I like the idea of different size cracks. I don't like that this is smooth and that this is not so smooth and so that variation within the board. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I've redone these boards Oops. and this is what I've, what I've done is I've kept some dark at the bottoms here and not as much in the middle, okay, so I'll be able to see my texture a little bit better. 
and then I put my Vaseline only in the dark areas and I concentrated it on the edges where things are going to crack up and on the sides. And then I did the whole thing in the crackle medium and then I'm going to do these two as well. And then I'll do the same exact steps with the red that I did before. Okay, now that we've got this all dried and everything, what we're going to do is, I know that I put my um, mediums in different places on the edge. I'm just going to just wipe off where they were, and you're just going to kind of rub at it and chip away at it a little bit. It's a little bit, when you put really heavy paint on it, it's a little bit harder to get off. Um, and if it doesn't come off exactly right, that makes it more chipped looking, in my opinion. Oops. <coughs> So I'll just rub all those off and you can heat it with a blow dryer so that you can see where they're at. And then when you're finished, give um, your paper towel a spritz with a little bit of degreaser and then just wipe off the greasy spots so that your paint will actually stick to the greasy spots. All right, I've got my table spritzed with just a squirt bottle of water and I'm gonna just peel all of this stuff up. I love being able to clean up the table before I move on to my project and I love not having to go do laundry or wash towels or clear off paper. I'm going to make a mess and I want it to come right off. Oh, and this is the nonstick craft mat. Sorry about that. Okay, I've taped my boards together. I don't want to paint it with the things on just because I don't want to, <clears throat> which sounds silly, but I like painting things flat. So I think it's going to be more hard to paint like that but I'm just going to go ahead and try it anyhow, and we'll see. So I'm going to thin some um, black green, and I'm going to thin some plantation pine. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll take, pardon the, the scruffy voice. So I've got my um, nitrile glove on. I have latex sensitivity, so um, I want a glove that doesn't have any latex. A little bit of chewed up sea sponge, and I've marked just where the edges of my pattern are, not the outer edges like out by the tips there, but this inner area where things would be deeply dark because there's a lot of volume. I've gone ahead and marked where that boundary is and first what I'll do is I'll put on some black green and I'll just kind of sponge that on. And actually I think I'm going to like it better if I slip slap first. Okay, so just more water. I don't want a base coat, and that's what that was just looking like. <clears throat> and then as we get out to the outer edges, you can let that just kind of um, smear off. And it'll be like, oh, what is that? Kind of, you know, you won't quite know what's there. And pick up a little bit stronger. So what my hope is, is by pushing these completely together and then painting it solid like this, it'll be easy to paint. And then when I put it together, I'm going to space it out just a little bit and hopefully it'll space nicely. And you want these little flips out to all be going in different directions. You don't want it to be pattern fold at all. Okay, and then we'll go into our plantation pine. Whoops, way too watery. <clears throat> and we'll give that just a little bit of stuff. And so now what this is, is this is the beginning of our greenery. And when that dries, we'll have a good good dark kind of foundation and it won't be red under there if I you know don't get something base coated or whatever. And I think we can pay just a little bit more attention to really wisping out over here on the edges. It should be really really um, like you really can't tell what's going on. <clears throat> Okay, that's very technical, right? 
Okay, in order to get started um, doing my um, my pine boughs, sorry, um, I've got my brush soaking. I've got this brush basin that has um, a little bit, this handle turns into a um, brush holder. So I've just rinsed my brush, my Raphael brush, which is a natural fiber um, brush, in my water, and then I set it out there for a few minutes. And what happens is, is it gets saturated with water molecules and the water molecules attract water molecules which means that it retains and holds the water better so I'm gonna get more strokes out of each out of each um, load and I've got my paints laid out this is gonna be my vein this is burnt sienna then black green plantation pine hauser light green or hauser medium green and hauser light green and that's the sequence that we're going to paint in so I'll bring this guy back over here and you want to make sure you get a good angle and you want to thin your paint to an ink-like consistency when you're using um, a liner brush. And you want glasses. Glasses are super important. You seem to have forgotten that I can't see. All right, now we've got our glasses in place. We can paint. So I'm going to thin my paint with um, water and make it ink-like consistency. And then even though my line art does not show all the things that, um, that I'm about to do, I'm going to put some judiciously out there where I think they should, maybe where more fluff is needed, because these pine boughs make great um, filler and great fluff for these kinds of designs. So in the case of in the middle here, where we have kind of blank spaces and stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and give myself some pine boughs, and I just won't fill them out as much as I would in other areas. Okay, and this is going to give me a nice full design. Okay, the next step we're going to do is we're going to thin black green. You always thin to ink like consistency when you're using a liner. Okay, and now we're going to start the pine boughs or the, the greenery on the pine boughs. I'll just start with this one right here and I'll walk through the sequence and then I'll finish mine off camera because it's just a lot of um, repetition. Okay, so you're just going to do loose boughs, loose um, needles okay and you might do two layers of this depending on you know how things are showing I've got that dark color underneath <clears throat> which is going to make this look kind of faded you want to pretend like anything around it isn't around it and you're going to just paint right through it and that way um, you don't have funny lines. Okay, I'll go ahead and do a couple more while I wait for that to dry. Okay, we're gonna take Plantation Pine as our next color. And I went ahead and did all of them while I was just sitting there waiting. And these darker colors I'm going ahead and doing just a little bit heavier than I would normally because if they're not going to show, then that's a problem. So I'm just making, increasing the um, amount of paint I'm using. This pine needle technique is really cool because it just kind of, everything lines up and layers up and it, pretty soon it looks like you have really thick little pine needles. And it's just a combination of all these little layers. I'm going to try and see if I can't skip to Hauser Medium. I think it's going to be too bright. While I like the idea of thick pine needles, I also want to not work at it too, too, too hard. Okay, and so what do we think? Yeah, I don't think I've got enough of a background yet. I'm going to have to repeat something, so I might as well do the um, plantation pine. Alright, now we're going to go with the Hauser Medium Green, and I've already done this one, but I'm going to go ahead and just repeat it, and I think you could do Hauser Medium two times without any problem. And then I'll start kind of clumping things. Let me show you closer in. Okay, so what I'll do is notice that I've got this kind of clumping out together here, and then I drop down and have another clump there. So I've got it really even for a while, and then what I'll do is I'll start doing like two or three and then just dragging them down in little little groups. 
And that, I think, just gives it a little bit more interest. It's not just like, hey, I'm a great big caterpillar eyelash kind of moment. Okay. Just get it how you like it. And then get out of there. Oops. Make sure you're um, kind of shaping your brush just a little bit so that you don't end up with big, thick globs. Okay, so we're going to go in with our Hauser Light Green. And make sure you're turning your piece so that you can get a good angle on your strokes. And you want them all to kind of end at different places. Notice that this one ends way out here, this one's way in, this one's medium, this one's long. Make sure that you're pulling them loosely so that they don't um, look like little soldiers. And then you can even cross over that, um, that center branch, that, that uh, burnt sienna bough. And I'll go in with a couple of stronger ones. Not so many. Just to give it some, some shizawi. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of olive green. And we'll thin it. See how screaming bright this turns out. Okay, I'm a little bit afraid of it, so I'm going to thin it a little bit more. It's a pretty bright green. <clears throat> okay, and what do we think? This is going to be like, you know, highlights in your hair where you just take and you just add just a little for some sparkle. And you add it where the other clumps of the brighter colors are to give those clumps sparkles, okay? Okay, so I'm going to use my um, ghostwriter and I'm going to just give myself my vein lines so that I keep them keep in mind when I'm painting. This Ghostwriter is a um, pen that's got a roller ball um, that's got not doesn't have any ink, so it's got like the roller ball of an ink pen without ink, a white ceramic lead, and a gray ceramic lead. And it also has an eraser on the back end for erasing. And it is an invaluable tool. Oh, and the ultra padded grip. Super duper duper because you know how it is when you're doing the mega grip there with your hand when you're tracing and stuff. Okay, I think it's time for a new palette. I'm going to use this crescent brush and actually I think I'm going to go down a size. You want to have enough room to scrub. This is a quarter inch. And it's a very, very short, compact, natural uh, mix hair brush that lets you do like a rouging technique for your highlights and so that way you don't have to float in the middle of things. Okay, this is leaf green and so what's going to happen is I'm going to do my highlights and it's going to act as if I've already shaded and stuff. So this is a really neat technique to cut down on some of the work. See how that's already looking like I shaded something and then highlighted it. And we'll leave that gap in the middle so that it looks like it's been shaded down the middle. Make sure that you come out a little bit towards the peaks. And you just have to scrub. It's a really, really fun technique because it's super, 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 super simple. Okay, we're going to go in Dirty Brush into Bright Green. And you want to be careful of this color because if you glom it on, it can be really, really strong, and we don't want that. You could switch to a smaller brush if you wanted to. I'm just using slightly light pressure, slightly lighter pressure. And you could repeat it if you need. I love this technique because it goes so stinking fast. And it's not like I don't want to be painting, it's just that I want to finish this project and move on to the next one. Now when you have things overlapping, this one's under, so we're not going to get it real bright up here on this side. Okay, so we'll just have that poking out like that. And then it can get brighter down here. Do 
we're going to go into a little bit of Indian turquoise with a hair touch of bright green in it. And on the areas of the leaf that would really stand out, we're going to put just a little bit of a, almost like a, it's a dry rub, but it's like a glaze almost. Okay, and that's going to be our little highlight. It's going to be off to one side. It's not going to be everywhere. Okay. We want to just say, okay, you here right in the middle. And that's going to add this kind of blue color to our um, palette. And I think I'm wondering if I want to go ahead and do a little bit of that. out here. Let's get that on. Yeah. I'm wondering. Okay, I'm going to hold the jury out on that one and we'll see. Okay, now we're going to repeat with just Desert Turquoise. And we're going to add just this really kind of crispy, almost touching it without, um, we're not really blending it line. So we'll just give it a little bit, almost like a sparkle. So not everywhere, just a little bit increasing that um, color. Okay, now we're going to go into our short bright brush, which is, see how nice and square that tip is? That gives us immense control. I have no idea why, but it works, um, and it's amazing. We're going to go into navy blue, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and give a little bit Float of navy blue. Let's sneak that on in there and see what that looks like. Try to keep it off of your blue because you don't want that to become some kind of a, um, glaze of color. Okay, switch to, to Payne's Gray for my shading color, because I just thought that other was just a little too bright for as dark as this is. And notice I'm just going to kind of line, whoops, put you on camera, I'm just going to kind of line next to that and not really float it out. Now over here, I might float it out just a little bit because that bow is going to be big and fluffy. Okay, and I'll get that nice and dark. where things go behind the bells. And then, like this this one is in behind that one, so it shouldn't be too liney, and we should just go ahead and sneak some like shadow from that leaf over the top of that. Okay, now I'm gonna go into black um, forest green, and I want to shade where some of these boughs are sneaking out under things. And that way we'll get them um, just sunk in just a little bit. So they shouldn't be the brightest, but they should kind of be back there. And that probably is going to help these feel a little less isolated. By the way, working with these boards just um, taped together is working out pretty good. It's not, it's not bad. I haven't been fighting it too bad. Yeah, I think that gives them a little bit more depth and a little bit more body. They're looking a little spindly. Okay, we're going to line the veins with um, bright green plus a touch of Indian turquoise. We want these to be nice and graceful lines and we don't want to worry about where they're going or whatever. We just want them to be shape following and be lovely. Alright, I think I kind of like this little bit of itty bitty bit of thinned turquoise, Indian turquoise in the leaf, in the pine needles but not everywhere. Like, let's not have it be all scattered in the middle and stuff. Let's put a couple of little sparkles on these little clusters. So see, that's just maybe like 10 little strokes. And don't death grip your brush when you're doing these pine needles because um, you don't need to. 
All you need to do is just to have a really loose hand and let the brush do the work. Okay, so I think we'll just scatter some of that. Okay, we're going to dry rub with cocoa on the bells. Okay, and so we're just going to do shape following. This is, yeah, cocoa, I already said that. We've got these little details right there, so we want to not get up too close because it would be shaded and highlighted or shaded right underneath that. And we probably will shade that, actually. I think I'm going to have to get a skinnier brush. Oh, that's working out. Okay, so just repeat that, and then we'll go ahead and use a liner or a round brush, sorry, with cocoa in it to do our highlighting. And we want to dry brush that so it's kind of scratchy. I've got that real lumpy. I'm going to just straighten that out <clears throat> just a little bit. I want to bring that off of the edge of the bell. Oops, I didn't do it very well though. It outside of the bell. All right, we're going to repeat with yellow ochre. And I'm just using my dirty brush to do this. Okay, that's popping that up just quite a bit. And then you'll highlight in the middle of the whatever this part is called, with yellow ochre. Okay, we're going to do a final highlight with sand. Okay, and that gives us some nice good shape. Okay, we're going to shade with antique maroon. So I'm just going to start at the top and then just draw that down. I'll come around the base. You do want to make sure your dry rubbing is dry before you um, do this because you can wipe it right off. Just because it's dry, dry rubbing doesn't mean that it's not going to be um, easy to remove. Okay. We'll repeat on the other side as soon as that dries. All right, you'll shade just a little bit with black plum to strengthen, and we don't want this everywhere, so I'm just going to kind of tuck that into the darkest corners. And now I'm feeling like my um, glued together thing is a little bit more problematic because I'm having to flip it around a lot. So almost time for me to say, okay, I'll glue it together. But it sure has been nice to paint like this. I think I'll wait until I do the bow. Alright, we'll take some of our antique gold and we will yellow up our bells a little bit. Um, as soon as they're dry, let's see, is anybody dry? So we're going to dry rub. Give it a little bit more of a yellow, yellow cast. Oops. Totally off camera. We'll try that again. Okay, so we'll dry rub with antique gold, and that'll make everything just kind of yellow up a little bit. All right, we're going to go at this bow up here with some gooseberry, and I'm using a dome brush, and we're dry rubbing. Got to go into these bigger sizes when we get into big things like this. Oops, hold them together. Imagine trying to float this. I'm not sure what they did before they ever did this kind of technique, but oof. I'm super glad to have this technique. Can repeat to strengthen. And 
and then you're going to shade and highlight. You're going to do the same thing to your um, little ribbons. But just switch brushes. All right, you're going to strengthen the ribbon with a little bit of sand in a dirty brush with the gooseberry. down here on your ribbon and your berries. Remember to look at the overall um, piece and don't let one piece become like too crazy strong. It's real easy to do sometimes. Okay, we're repeating with just sand and then I think just a little bit of sparkle. I'm just kind of scumbling that, but it's got a lot of moisture. This is not a dry rub here. This is actually strong stuff. <clears throat> okay, gave just a little highlight with the gooseberry. Now I'm going to go through and just give that sparkle with the sand. I'm just touching. <clears throat> and we'll do a little bit of the sparkle on the ribbon as well with the sand. So it's just drawing a line kind of through it. It's kind of a floated line. Give everybody a little bit of jazz. Give it a little bit stronger stuff down here. Oops, get you down there. A bit stronger down here. Yeah, it's coming together nicely. And we're going to shade our ribbon with alizarin crimson. Okay, let's see if I can do this without messing everybody up. So we have this this guy way back here. Sorry, he comes from there. That's right. He's closed there. This is almost going to be glazy so that um, so that it joins all the, the highlights and the shading and everything together. And give it this almost like washi glaze. He's sneaking behind here, but he also seems to need something back there, so we'll just kind of give him a little touch on both. Okay, and we're going to deepen that, and we're going to give, um, we're going to put a little wash inside of there. So we'll go with pretty strong alizarin on our berries on the opposite side of where we highlighted or shaded them. All of our ribbons sneaking through here needs to get each side shaded. So it starts looking like it's actually winding through. Okay, I'm gonna go into my berries, not my berries, my um, holly, and I wanna kind of strengthen its highlights. The shape following, maybe mix a little bit of sand in with our desert turquoise. Get a little bit of shine going on. here. And the shine can't be everywhere. Don't let it be everywhere. 
It's got to be where you've got the color already the brightest. If you need to brighten up in some places, go ahead. That's just going to kind of help jazz things up just a little bit. Okay, so a little bit this looks exactly as if we are sitting right on the, the surface um, and it's painted like right there. So it looks like an applique in a way. So what I want to do is take a little bit of our soft black and I want to shade here and there. See, where did I just go? Okay, there. I'm assuming I'll be able to see that when it dries to give it some lift. Oops. I'm going to lift that off of that background. I think that's going to help. Not everything will be lifted. And all around our bow, probably. All right, I think we'll do a little bit of the same with the um, <clears throat> with these um, evergreen things. But what we'll do is we'll just kind of cut it in to underneath sides. Okay, so we won't put it all the way around it. We'll give it like it's casting a shadow. We'll bring it in and out of. better. Like our light source is coming from above. <clears throat> and we could go into lamp black. If I can find lamp black, I should have it out somewhere. Oh, here we are. So uh, we can go into a little teeny bit of lap black, black. It's a scared color because it's like the absence of color and it's a cold color, really cold. So what we can do is on a couple of the things that are seriously in front of things, like maybe up here on the ribbon, we can just right next to it, give it just a little bit of strengthening. Don't want that everywhere, and I'm getting all wonky here. Almost scribbling with it. It's much better without um, with that done. Just a kiss here and there. Do not do too much because it'll look real outliney. All right, we're going to go through and find a couple of our ends of our hollies. So, like, I don't like that all the tips are very, very dark. And they're getting lost. But I don't want it to extend too far and get too bright and get too obnoxious. Totally lost my line there. So like that, and then repeat with some of the Indian turquoise just on the tip. These are very, very shiny um, little guys, so I think they can do a little bit of strength and get by with it. Make sure you're telling your story, though. Don't, um, don't go putting one of these on like the dark place here. You want to put it in places where it would be kept in light. All right, we're going to try some soft, um, some black plum, sorry, on our bell for some additional shading. So let's see what we get. Okay, yeah, I think that's deepening things nicely. Okay, we don't want to shade everywhere, so we want to shade kind of where we think um, things would get kind of deeply and darkly. If you start shading just everywhere, then what happens is it 
<clears throat> it just looks a little bit flat. And I've gone ahead and glued my board together too, so <clears throat> that looks a little bit different. Look at how much different it looks on this side from this side with just that little bit of shading. Um, it just gives it so much more life depth. Okay, so we'll just shade all the same places and deepen it up. I'm just not going to shade in every same place. You want to make sure to shade, and I think actually let's shade in there with the soft black <clears throat> so there's a difference in the colors. And I think it's entirely possible that I'm going to change the bells. I, I'm not liking how dull they turned out. So when you're reading, when it, when you're following along with the DVD, make sure you're following the instructions, not so much painting along with the DVD, because sometimes things change. And so I think the learning, the learning opportunity to say, hey, I don't like how that looks afterwards is very valuable. At least I think it is. So we choose to leave that in there. Okay, then we have to shade on the knot. Okay, we'll go ahead and shade inside with the soft black. And that even really wakes us up as far as um, as far as how dark things are getting contrast. Okay, that looks like we've got the inside and the outside of the bow. I think I lost this one. be a little bit um, lighter at the bottom. I want a little bit more deep there at the top. Okay, we're going to take our black plum and we're going to strengthen all of these dudes as well. A little bit more like they're winding in and out of the, the tree. And then we'll take a small little dry float and we'll shade the back side of these berries. Strengthen them. So I was telling you earlier that I glued the boards together, and I'll tell you how I did it. <clears throat> I lined everybody up, and I used the quick grip glue, and then I positioned them how I would want them, and then I just centered the little board on there, and I applied the glue to the back of this. And then with quick grip, what you can do is you can make it apply quickly. And so what I did is you apply it and you lift it off a couple of times and then it'll dry really quickly. And then it gets real tacky and stuff. So I haven't got my board um, shaded and stuff like that, but I really wanted it put together before I started messing with the final stuff. Um, and then I haven't wiped off where my, um, where my cracked paint is yet, but I'll get to that. The other thing that I wanted to add is that we have, you have the ability <clears throat> with this, we didn't realize it until um, just today, you have the ability with this to flip it over and we're going to include two extra sets of slats and so now you have a piece that can be reversed and you could paint a, a like maybe a brown wood grain on this side and you just flip that rope over and it's a double-sided project. So it has two, two surfaces in one and um, it's twice the painting. Okay, so I've rebased the bells with honey brown. <clears throat> and now I'm going to sprinkle a couple of little stars here and there amongst things. So I'm going to use my dome brush. I'm going to do this really dry. Maybe a little bit less dry. Control is what you're after with stenciling and that makes it perfect and easy. And so we just want things to be um, as not juicy <clears throat> as possible so that that way things don't bleed under the stencil. So 
So just here and there, I want to have just some little trailing stars. I'm trying to decide big, small, whatever's. I'm going to do little clusters of them. wanting to carry that color of gold all the way down. <clears throat> Maybe we can sneak over there and give it that little arm that's missing. Yeah, I think that just adds some, some jazz and some filler. Okay, so we've got our um, marigold, and we're going to dry rub with the marigold <clears throat> to create highs and lows. Same exact technique that we did earlier, just we're going to make these bells just a little bit more yellow. They were just dull, dull, dull before. Okay, and so that's already a little bit brighter. Now what we'll do for the stars is we'll look for the ones that we did. I should have kind of done this a little bit more methodically and chose just a few. Let's just dry rub in our star on one side. Whoops. <clears throat> Give them just a little bit of shazowie. And then what we'll do is we'll shazawi the other side with a little float out of um, the burnt sienna. Okay, and we're going to repeat um, repeat our highlight with a little bit of camel. So I think I've talked long enough to make this be okay to okay and see how much nicer and brighter that is. It actually looks a little bit more golden. Okay, so we're gonna need to tell our story kind of coming down the the pike here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip around, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow up here in my bow. This is the, um, this is the, what color, marigold, mustard seed, sorry. And I'm going to keep it out of the highlight area, just have it kind of sneaking around in that bow. And then what we'll do is we'll go and kiss some of these leaves. Almost like the bells and everything are lighting up the leaf just a little bit. And so we'll bring a little bit over there. And that way we're getting some light into the middle of our areas here. And this is where I start squinting my eyes and kind of leaning back and just being like, okay, where can we kind of bring that color down? something going on up there. We could even have just a little bit scumbled on our little bits of holly. Um, not holly, boughs, pine boughs. Now we've got that yellow color kind of sneaking through. Yeah, this is making me much happier. And now we've got a shade. Okay, so we're going to shade with burnt, um, burnt sienna. 
This is exactly the same thing we did earlier. Okay, now I've got my boards all glued apart, so do, do be careful that you maintain your shape as you're doing this. Okay, and I'll shade everything that I can shade the right way, and then I'll start flipping my boards around to get the other side. So I can get all these done on this side. This just saves you a little bit of time, just bouncing around. Okay, now we go ahead and do the stars as well. So what we'll do is we'll just give a little tuck of this brown color into the side of our star that we didn't um, didn't highlight, and that'll just give them a little bit of that family color. Okay, we're going to make little holes for the stars to have little wires sticking out of. I think just adding that little bit of contrast <clears throat> makes it more believable somehow. Oops, yeah, let's get the hole where it belongs. And I think we might wind some little bit of something going through. We'll see what I come up with. Okay, and then we're going to take our camel color and we're going to highlight the, um, probably need to base this. I don't think that it can come from nowhere, so I've got just a little bit that needs to stick out on the end. Oops. Okay, so I'll get that out there. And then we'll go into our camel color. <clears throat> and we will get a good old highlight. And that will give us some of our dimension. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this or not, but I'm going to give it a try. I've got honey brown, and I'm going to kind of thread this in and out. <clears throat> of our tree, of our ribbon. So you get a little kind of a, this is my twisty wire moment. Trail it out and see what we think. That goes behind that leaf and swings around over there. <clears throat> Making it through. Bring it down. And now what we'll do is we'll go into um, our marigold, and in the middles, where things are going to be bent out, we'll give little highlights. Things that come in front. out. This will just give us a little dimension. It's not like we're shading anything or anything like that. It's just
I think I'm digging that. It just adds a little bit more jewelry and, and awesomeness. Okay, and on the same token, where things come in and they'd be dark, we're going to go ahead and line the shade with our burnt sienna. Not everywhere, just, just areas where you know that, hey, that would be shaded, where it's going to matter, where the, where the wraps come in. <clears throat> it's not showing as much as I'd like it to, so I don't think this is going to be the most important step. If you wanted to skip it, I bet you could. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just because now I know it's there. Okay, so we're going to take some, we're going to take this big Sable Tech brush, which does really rough strokes, and we're going to mix a little bit of pebble and a little bit of charcoal gray and then wipe it out. And what we want to do is we want to create just a little bit of texture and variation in our color. Just a little bit here and there. Not too obvious. It's a little bit obvious right now, so we don't want it to stay obvious. Okay. A little bit going here and there across, a little bit coming down from the top. <clears throat> in our bottom as well. Okay, so that gives us just a little bit of background texture. Now we're going to go into, I want to say lamp black, but I'm going to try soft black first. The great big oval glaze, and then we're going to just give things a little bit of a shade. And we'll give a little bit of a kind of a variation going through. Don't shade everywhere, because everywhere would not be nice looking. Okay. And we'll go through and give just that every old other place a little bit of texture and wonderfulness. We're wanting a little bit more coming down the sides so that we get a framed look. <clears throat> and I'm not sure I'm digging the um, streaky look, so I think what I'm going to do is just go into a, kind of a wash and just kind of deepen that down with my soft black. soft black and we'll go ahead and get out the lamp black as well and a great big flat brush and we'll go ahead and shade that edge with just black. We can bring a little bit of it in. It doesn't have to be right along the edge. And then we'll repeat across the top. So I've got some just irregular streaks there. It's okay. I don't love it. But then we'll Bring this down just a little bit. If it seems a little dark, just wipe it back a little bit. Okay, so we're going to spatter with thinned lamp black. And then we're going to spatter to the outside edges, so I'm going to point my brush away. and allow it to kind of spray out, keeping it off my project if I can. This just adds <clears throat> some variation in the background. Now we'll add a little bit 
more overall stuff. Pointing away. If you've painted the back side of this, don't have it on here. Maybe um, adhere some, um, what's that seal and stick stuff that sticks to itself, whatever that plastic wrap is, to the back, or put it on the towel so that you're spinning the towel through the stuff, not the, the project. Okay, I think I can, I think I can dig that pretty well. Um, I want to say we need a couple of spatters of some green or some yellow. Maybe we'll go with some yellow. So we'll go with some honey brown. And we'll spatter, we'll anchor. And spatter with over these pine bows. Now let's give it one or two spatters with our marigold. Okay, we're going to take, I'm going to lay my stencil back over the top. I'm going to take my dirty brush and I'm going to highlight the tops of my letters. Just kind of marching straight across. Very low as you need to. Yep. Realign as you need to. Okay, then I'm going to get a clean brush, and that's a wet brush. We don't want wet brushes. Definitely only clean brushes that are dry. I can find, I've got about 150 of these little brushes, because they're so stinking wonderful. Burnt Sienna, and then that's going to be our base shade. You can do a wonderful little technique where you can use the stencil for drop shading, but I actually find it kind of fun to drop shadow, so I'm not going to. There we go. So look at a difference that looks like and to that. And how awesome that that took us. What did that take us? Two minutes? I think probably just two minutes. So I'll repeat down here, and then we'll add the drop shading. <clears throat> so we'll take, hmm, I think, lamp black try it. I'm going to do a drop shading all to the left of the piece. You want your paint thinned. Just stroke along the letters. It's really just like a whoop whoop whoop. It works really slick to stencil it too. I mean that's an absolutely really cool thing. If you've got some big lettering to do, that's the way to go. But this is just little stuff, so. Okay, I've got my hinges based in soft black, and I'm going to take this um, angle stippler, and I've got some water in my brush, and I'm just going to pound the ever loving snot out of that over there. And what I'm going to do is make this look a little bit like there's some rust. Okay, and I'll let that dry. Okay, so I've got my little hinges here, and I'm going to take my lamp black, and I'm just going to shade the back end of them with way too much water. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so that gives us just a little bit of something going on. 
so you can see it against the background. Yeah, I like it. Okay, my rusty color um, faded a little bit, so I'm going to go into a little bit more and just put some of that in, and then I'll go into a little bit of my honey brown mixed. And then that should stay just a little bit brighter so that we can actually see that we have a little bit of rusty action going on. I'm going to use my hot glue and I'm going to glue down my little hingy dudes. Not very much glue. And you just want that to kind of come near the edge. Don't worry about it getting all the way to the edge or when you flip it over you'll be able to see that. So just get it kind of near there and it'll be fine. Okay, I'm not digging how plain my bow is. It's just kind of sitting over there, just kind of, I don't know, messing around. So I'm going to get into a little bit of my gooseberry. And I'm going to use my mesh and give us a little bit of texture. Because I just don't like it so plain. And we'll go gooseberry plus sand if I can find it. And I like just the idea of having just a little bit more something going on back there. Keep that in place and I'll just do a little brush mix. And then this color will just go in where the highlights are. And maybe just a only sand. Yeah. This is just sticky mesh. And I think that just adds just a little bit of jazz to the bow. And we can go ahead down the thing and just add just a little bit to it. Like there's just a little pattern to the bow. The more you want things to fade away, the less detail you give them, so don't make it too crazy where you don't want it crazy. Okay, yeah, I think that adds just that little bit of something. Makes me much happier. <laughs> 